Pouring up the champagne Pop It's my house Come on Turn it up The Idaho Vandals came into the 2015-2016 season with high expectations. With a crew of returning veterans, the Vandals set their sights, first on a tough preseason and then a successful conference schedule. The Vandals did succeed, but let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Overall, it was an up-and-down season, but the Vandals never lost sight of their championship goal. As usual, Idaho played an extremely challenging non-conference schedule that included four games against eventual NCAA tournament teams. The Vandals got off to a great start, starting the year with four victories in the first five games, the only loss coming to WAC champion Cal State Bakersfield. The Vandals ran into the toughest stretch of the schedule next, eventually leveling off to 5-5 five and five on the season. Two of those losses came to NCAA tournament teams Arkansas Little Rock and a Pac-12 opponent, USC in a game which the Vandals were tied at the half. The turning point came in early December when local rival Washington State made the quick trip to the Cowan Spectrum. The Vandal faithful was as loud as ever. The team did not disappoint, responding and taking the Cougars down for the second year in a row with an inspiring 78-74 win. It was Idaho's first home win against the Cougars since 2002, and the first time the Vandals had won back-to-back -back games in the Battle of the Palouse since the late 1980s. After wrapping up the non-conference season with three straight wins and finishing with a record of eight and five, the Vandals turned their attention to the big sky. Idaho faced a very tough opening stretch, the first three games on the road, but responded well with two road victories. And Calendron's going to get a decent look from the right side wing. It's up for The Vandals three then would the face right a bit of a challenge wing. and would have to dig deep. Veteran leader and point guard Perion Calendrette went down with a foot injury. Sophomore Victor Sanders, who eventually earned second team All Big Sky honors, stepped up in a major way, carrying the team to a 2 and 1 record without Calendrette, including a win on the road in a very difficult place to play in Missoula. He averaged nearly 30 points a game in that stretch. The run would be short-lived as Sanders was hit with the injury bug and was forced to miss several games midway through conference play with a broken bone in his hand. With his two top scorers out of the lineup and on the mend, this time not just one player stepped up, but an entire team. Veteran leaderships from seniors Chris Sarbaugh, Nashon George, and Pauline Empowe, along with strong contributors from the likes of Chad Sherwood, Nick Blair, Ty Egbert and Jake Strahan all made a mark in the absence of Calendret and Sanders keeping Idaho in the all-important top four in the Big Sky Conference standings. The Vandals would eventually get Calendret and Sanders back just in time to close out the regular season, finishing it off at 6-1 and one and earning the number three seed in the Big Sky Conference tournament. Idaho took on a very familiar foe in Eastern Washington in the quarterfinals in Reno and needed some help from across the roster to get the job done. The duo of Nate Sherwood and Arcady McCurchin gave the Eagles fits inside while point guard Pat Ingram stepped up his offensive game to the tune of a career-high 12 points. And as had been the case all season long, Jordan Scott made his biggest impact on the defensive end, blocking Eastern's final shot attempt and giving the Vandals the win. Idaho then ran into a tough Montana squad that refused to quit in the semifinals, the Vandals hanging in all game long but couldn't get past the Grizzlies. But the season did not end at the Big Sky Conference Tournament, the College Basketball Invitational. The CBI came calling next, inviting Idaho to join the 16-team postseason tournament with an opening round game at Seattle U. The Vandals would fall in that game, but the experience gained will surely pay dividends for the squad moving forward. It was the fourth postseason appearance in Coach Don Berlin's eight seasons at the helm. And for the record books, well, let's just say the Vandals made some history. 
Idaho finished the season with a 23 and 13 record. Coach Don Verlin's crew came up with the first 20 plus win season in nearly 25 years and the most wins in conference since the 89 90 season. The Vandals finished off the year with the ninth most wins in school history. Idaho also establishing school record for points in a game with 127 and an assist in the game with 39. This season's 21 win adds to Coach Verlin's total as the winningest coach in Idaho Vandal basketball history. And the Vandals continue the legacy of strong outside shooters this season as Idaho came up with 223 made three-pointers and 549 made free throws, both third most in school history. Not only did this team make history in scoring, but the Idaho Vandals led the Big Sky in several other statistical categories, including scoring defense, defensive field goal percentage, and rebound margin. This Vandal team was also ranked in the top 25 in the country in rebound margin, as well as offensive rebounding and getting to the free throw line. And when you have a strong team, you have depth. The Vandals made it in the top 10 in the country in bench minutes. That means they have a core group of returning players and young players that got experience to look back on this season as one that will help in the future down the road. Idaho loses three seniors this year with Nashon George, Pauline Mpawe, and Chris Sarbaugh playing their final game in a Vandal uniform. All three were integral parts of the team's success in 2016. While Sarbaugh and Mpawe had previously graduated and were working on advanced degrees, George will graduate in May, continuing the academic excellence during Coach Don Verlin's tenure that has seen 24 of the 27 seniors receive their degree. The future is bright for the Idaho Vandals, and when we look back on the 2015-2016 team, we will remember them fondly with team with great talent, but maybe even better, great heart. Now I'm going to go